actually because uh, I thought that I couldn't do anything else probably. It's, a, it's like, it's like a, at the very early stage it, it, it was like an addiction. And uh, I think that if you, if in any kind of creative process, I think that uh, it has, you do this because you are, not because you can't do anything else. In my case, I, I think I could have done some other things, but actually it was more the fact that uh, I didn't want to do anything else. This, this, this kind of excitement, I mean, exploring technology and, and uh, confronting myself and challenging myself to, uh, to new tools, to new technology, being, being curious, and is something that is part of the, my creative process, really. So if you're challenging yourself, um, it, it's, a, it's a learning process? It's a constant learning process. And also, I, I, I think that uh, these days, I start to discover that uh, it, could, it may well be also a learning process for technology. When we are talking about artificial intelligence, the fact that also probably our machines are learning from me and from us, which, not, which is not necessarily scary, but it's going to, to change a lot of, um, of, of things about our positioning regarding creative process, generally speaking, in the next few years. Actually, you know, Chinese people used to say that, um, I mean, artists are, are their own therapists. You know, for instance, if you have a problem with your liver or your stomach or your intestines, I mean, you, you then will be attracted as a painter more with green or red or orange because that will, will help, help to uh, soothe or to, to strengthen some of your organs. And I think, and it's the same for people are, sometimes you don't understand why musicians are, are more at ease in uh, G minor or, or uh, uh, I don't know, or C major. And it's probably linked to our physiology, your, your, own, your own physiology. So I like this idea. And I try, to, uh, I, I try to help all my organs at the same time to try not to repeat myself too much. I, I thought that I, I learned being different and I realize now that I probably will always do the same, the same album. I mean by this that if you have the chance to have your own style, whatever you do is actually to, to uh, what makes you and makes me going on. is actually this kind of uh, obsession of trying to get it right one day, to get, to get closer to the ideal album, the ideal piece of music. And uh, I will probably not achieving it. This is the reason why I go on, you know. No, I think not yet. I think I'm getting there. I'm, for, for, you think my, 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 for my next album, for the first time, I'm a little more satisfied than the other times. And there is a very stupid reason of that. It's actually, uh, I had a deadline with a record company. Even if I could cheat, I would, I would, I, I had, you have to have deadlines in your life. So I had this precise deadline and that was uh, beginning of July. And then suddenly the, uh, Sony, my record company, they realized that uh, they made a mistake and they gave me an, one extra month on the last minute. And then that was fantastic because I had this extra month to actually fine tune what I've never been able to fine tune because most of the time you, you go until the end of the mastering process and you're totally exhausted. You have not slept for a few, few nights and then you, 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 you lose the focus. And then after you said, Shit, I should have, I should have uh, adjust that and all that. This time I, I've, I've been able to do it. So I'm, I'm quite, quite satisfied about this, this, new, uh, uh, this new album on that aspect. Not really, I've been tempted and with what I've done with uh, Oxygen for instance is to do a sequel. Mm -hmm. I, when I first did the, the when I did the first uh, uh, Oxygen, I said to myself, it could be cool in my life to do a sequel of music. I always loved sequels for in TV, uh, movies, literature. And it's, it's strange that uh, you don't have that many sequels in music. And I think it's quite, quite interesting. And for this Equinox Infinity, the, my next album, mm -hmm. it's not exactly a sequel, but uh, I started for the first time in my life by uh, the visual of the, of the artwork, this kind of strange creatures watching you, and then say, okay, these watchers, what happened to them? today and what would happen to them in 40 years from now. And then I started by the visual, the graphics, even doing one note of music or being in studio. And then when I had all these visuals done, I started to do 
the soundtrack of the artworks. I never worked like this. I, it, it was quite refreshing, quite, quite fun. I think at a very early stage, I realized that uh, visuals is part of the vocabulary or the grammar of uh, electronic music performance for a very simple reason. All instruments from rock and roll or, or classical world are instruments which have been um, devised and designed for performance, for playing and for sharing music with an audience and with people. And then we put microphones on them to record them. Uh, for electronic instruments, it's the reverse. All the, the instruments we have have been devised and designed in studios and laboratories, and then we try to make them on stage, which is actually the... And then, of course, we all know that staying behind your laptop for two hours is not the most sexy thing in the world, so the visuals became something obvious for me at the beginning of my career as a performer. It's really, I would say, really 50-50 yeah. these days. Uh, I, but depending on, on, the, on the project, of course. Uh, I think that, uh, as I said just previously, I think for the, 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 the past few years, and thank you for companies such as Native Instruments, I mean, for, I feel that for the first time in history of the digital uh, era, uh, we have plugins and soft uh, synth totally different from the analog synthesizers, where for a long time, as we know, lots of virtual instruments were just emulating and imitating even the look mm -hmm. of instruments. Now, we, we are finished with that. And then I had the privilege to get, uh, I'm very lucky to have the, the, analog, the real analog instruments in gear in my, in my studio. So if I want the sound of a Moog, I'm going to use a real Moog, not a f fake Moog. Mm -hmm. but, but I know that a lot of my uh, analog instruments can't do what lots of instruments such, such as massive or, or round or whatever um, instruments we can, uh, we can think about, virtual instruments we can think about. You can't do that with anything else. And that's uh, really what I like. This is the reason why I think that these days the real luxury is to combine both. Yeah, because I think one of the uh, basics, uh, basic um, ingredient of, crea of creativity is uh, to uh, create accidents or to be victims of accidents. And more you change your gear from one moment to another moment, even within one track, more you, 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 are, you expose yourself to, ac to unexpected mm -hmm. and to unexpected accidents. And I think that that's really cool. If you are staying on the, same, on the same instruments all the time, then you get used to it, or the same process, you get used to it. So I like, for instance, changing even, uh, it's stupid what I'm going to say, but it's, it's, it is not when you think of it. For instance, changing the place in the studio. So for, of course, if I have a keyboard on the left, left side of the desk, suddenly to, to put it on the right side, and, and then it's, it's not the same. And then you don't do the same thing. So it's a good trick.